Hello and welcome to Trojan Field in Beloit. It's eight-man all-star football division one here on Smoky Hills PBS. I'm Jeremy McGuire along with Larry Jantz. And Larry, these young men have come together and it's a great thing to play a little football in the summer. Yes, it is. And of course, Lance Barr, he's from the head coach of the West. And of course, you get, you know, Alex Hamilton. I mean, uh, no, I McMillan, I'm kidding. He's from, played for CT Young down at Pretty Prairie when he's a kid, but now he's at Madison, head coach there. He's got quite a staff on him. He's even got the, the division championship. He's got Kevin Ayers as assistant. Can you imagine that? And then got Cor Shelby, you know, Hoppus. And then, you know, it's just amazing the staff he's got. And the kids have been just uh, amazing out there in practice. Like I said, lots of misdirection, a lot of misception. They're going to run a lot of. RPO is a lot of run pass options. You're going to see a lot, a lot of misdirection. A lot of, that's what I saw. On that one, had seven practices this week since they got here. What's going to be the key to getting things together here in such a quick amount of time? What are the keys to victory for both teams? Well, the key for uh, for for Alex McMillan is as run the run the football on offense. They have no turnovers, and then of course control. Uh, the possessions, each possession, and move the sticks, keep the ball going, keep it going, and that's what they hope to do. As far as on offense for the for D1 East, for D1 West, why well, he has protect the football again. Imagine that, play fast, and also score often. That's what they want to do as far as Lance Barr and his staff. And they're going to need to stay hydrated because it's going to be warm this afternoon. And they've been getting plenty of breaks every 15 minutes during practice, so I know it's up to them to have that. They've been hydrated all week, at least, up to this point. It should be a fun one here in Beloit. We'll have more coming up on Smoky Hills PBS. Production of the eight-man All-Star Game is made possible by Heartland Tri-State Bank, locally owned, community focused, member FDIC, equal housing lender. GBT Communications, Simpson Farm Enterprises of Hayes, Ransom, Great Bend, and Beloit. Leitner Buildings in Hayes and Atwood. Hoxie State Insurance, serving the Hoxie area. Crustbuster Speed Kit, incorporated in Spearville and Dodge City, Kansas. G&L Pharmacy, serving the Nest City area. Garden of Eden Specialty Grocery Store, Little River. Farmer State Bank, Galva, Kansas. Active Balance Chiropractic and Acupuncture Clinic in Atwood, Bird City, and Goodland. At Next Tech Wireless, we're proud to invest in Kansas communities. We have nearly 50 locations across the state to support your wireless needs. We're friends, we're neighbors, we are Kansas. MNM Seeds, channel seedsmanship at work, serving the Glen Elder area. Programming on Smoky Hills PBS is made possible in part by an underwriting grant from Nextech, providing the area with top-notch broadband, business, technology, and advertising solutions. Nextech proudly supports public broadcasting and all of its ventures, impacting the economic growth of rural communities. And now we are ready for the introduction of today's All-Stars. The Division I East squad is wearing the blue uniforms and will be the home team on the scoreboard, and the Division I West squad is wearing red uniforms and will be the visiting team. So first, for the East, from Chase County, number one, Trent Rogers. Trent's parents are Matt and April Rogers, and his coach is Brody Vandergriff. For the West, from Hodgman County, number zero, Isaac Salmons. Isaac's parents are Oliver and Christy Salmons, and his coach is Matt Hausman. If the players and coaches and family would step forward to the 40-yard line, we would appreciate it. Next for the East, from Burlingame, number three, Austin Tyson. Austin's parents are Stephen and Amy Tyson, and his coach is Jeff Slater. 
for the West from Attica, Attica number one, Blake Goodman. Blake's parents are Roger and Lori Goodman, and his coaches are Kerry McCann and Luke Greenwood. For the East, from Madison, number seven, Hunter Engel. Hunter's parents are Ryan and Alana Engel, and his coach is Alex McMillan. For the West, from Decatur County, Gavin Eulen. Gavin's parents are Brad and Shelby Eulen, Melissa Eulen, and Casey Alstrom, and his coach is Trevor Williams. For the East, from Little River, number 10, Jaden Garrison. Jaden's parents are Brent and Amy Garrison, and his coach is Kevin Ayers. For the West, from Spearville, number 4, Trace Tassett. Trace's parents are Sean and Kelly Tassett, and his coach is Travis Calloway. For the East, from Lincoln, number 11, Tyler Good. Tyler's parents are Kevin and Katie Good, and his coach is Dustin Patti. For the West, from South Gray, number five, Ethan Salmons. Ethan's parents are Craig and John Lee Salmons, and his coach is Grant Salmons. For the East, from Madison, number 12, Ryan Wolgram. Ryan's parents are Dale and Angela Wolgram, and his coach is Alex McMillan. For the West, from this city, number 8, Matthew Delaney. Matthew's parents are Justin and Elizabeth Delaney, and his coach is Mark Cole. For the East, from Little River, number 13, Graham Stevens. Graham's parents are Brian and Trudy Stevens, and his coach is Kevin Ayers. For the West, excuse me, from South Gray, number 10, Aaron Skidmore. Aaron's parents are Jeff and Michelle Skidmore, and his coach is Grant Salmon. For the East, from Sedan, number 14, Eli Campbell. <laughs> Eli's parents are James and Rachel Campbell, and his coach is Mick Holt. For the West, from Wichita County, Manuel Chavez. <laughs> Manuel's parents are Reyes and Mele Chavez, and his coach is Brant Douglas. For the East, from Washington County, number 15, Drew Berman. Drew's parents are Kevin and Melanie Berman, and his coach is Doug Thompson. For the West, from Hill City, number 12, Brody McDowell. Brody's parents are Wade and Susie McDowell, and his coach is Travis Davian. For the East, from Chase County, number 12, Owen Eidman. Owen's parents are DJ and Allison Eidman, and his coach is Brody Vandergriff. From Wichita County, for the West, number 14, Cade Ritzke. Cade's parents are Jamie and Jenna Ritzke, and Josh and Courtney Young. And his coach is Grant Douglas. For the East, from Clifton Clyde, number 22, Aiden Rudolph. Aiden's parents are Edmund and Lacey Rudolph, and his coach is Russ Steinbrock. For the West, from Ness City, number 20, Edwin Robledo. Edwin's parents are Edgar and Arlene Robledo. And his coach is Mark Coles. For the East, from Canton Galva, number 26, Braden Collins. 
Braden's parents are Jeff Collins and Jennifer Hertel, and his coach is Shelby Hoppus. For the West, from Hill City, number 23, Jace Hamel. Jace's parents are Greg and Tanya Hamel, and his coach is Travis Davian. For the East, from Oswego, number 32, Mason Mills. Mason's parents are James and Tricia Mills, and his coach is Matt Fowler. For the West, from Maxville, number 24, Cleveland Huggins. Cleveland's parents are Robert and Debbie Huggins, and his coach is Kyle Bright. For the East, from Oswego, number 33, Isaac Elkins. Isaac's parents are Moses and Valerie Braun, and his coach is Matt Fowler. For the West, from Rollins, Rollins County, number 34, Cyrus Green. Cyrus' parents are Matt and April Green, and his coach is Matt Smith. For the East, from Burlingame, number 42, Garrett Robison. You're okay. <laughs> Garrett's parents are Jeremy Robison, Crystal Seastrom, and Miranda Keeler, and his coach is Jeff Slater. For the West, from Spearville, number 54, Tanner Miller. Tanner's parents are Bill and Billy Jean Miller, and his coach is Travis Calloway. For the East, from Madison, number 44, Isaac Miser. Isaac's parents are Gary Miser and Erica Barrera, and his coach is Alex McMillan. For the West, from La Crosse, number 56, Lucas Webster. Lucas's parent is Kevin Webster, and his coach is John Webster. For the East, from Bennington, number 52, Tristan Young. Tristan's parents are Troy Young and Jody Reynolds, and his coach is Brian Schamberg. For the West, from Wichita County, number 62, A.C. Hermosillo. A.C.'s parents are Armando and Rosa Hermosillo Lopez, and his coach is Grant Douglas. For the East, from Clifton Clyde, number 54, Jarek Wykey. Jarek's parents are Tony and Crystal Wykey, and his coach is Russ Steinbrock. For the West, from Hoxie, number 69, Harlan Obioha. Harlan's parents are Tito Obioha, and Tabitha Gillespie, and his coach is Lance Barr. For the East, from Canton Galva, number 58, Connor Kane. Connor's parents are Sean and Jeannie Kane, and his coach is Shelby Hoppus. For the West, from Argonia, number 87, Noah Phillips. Noah's parents are Kelly and Jenny Phillips, and his coach is Luke Greenwood. For the East, from Ken Galva, number 99, Keaton Littrell. <laughs> Keaton's parents are Jared and Tracy Littrell, and his coach is Shelly Hoppus. And for the West, number 99, Caden White. Caden's parents are Scott White and Missy White, and his coach is Lance Barr. The coaches for the East, the assistant coach from Chase County, Brody Vandergriff. Also an assistant coach from Little River, Kevin Ayers. The other assistant coach from Canton Galva, Shelby Hoppus. The head coach for the eight-man Division I East All-Stars from Madison, Alex McMillan. And the coaches for the West, 
assistant coach from the cross, John Webster. Also assistant coach from Joaquini Trago, Trago, Pat Haxton. Assistant coach from Leota, Wichita County, Grant Douglas. And the head coach of the eight-man Division I West All-Stars from Hoxie is Lance Barr. Before the 2005 All-Star Game, the 12 coaches of that year's eight-man All-Star Game established the Jerry Slayton Most Inspirational Player Award. Jerry was from Hanson and had been in charge of other divisions and those are the introductions for today's participants. When we come back, it's time for kickoff. The Kansas 8-man Division I All-Star Game on Smoky Hills PBS. Production of the 8-man All-Star Game is made possible by GBT Communications, Heartland Tri-State Bank, locally owned, community focused, Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Crustbuster Speed King, Incorporated in Spearville and Dodge City, Kansas. Farmer State Bank, Galva, Kansas. MNM Seeds, Channel Seedsmanship at Work, serving the Glen Elder area. Programming on Smoky Hills PBS is made possible in part by an underwriting grant from Nextech, providing the area with top-notch broadband, business, technology, and advertising solutions. Nextech proudly supports public broadcasting and all of its ventures, impacting the economic growth of rural communities. And welcome back to Trojan Field in Beloit. We're about set for kickoff, the eight-man Division One All-Star Game, Jeremy McGuire along with analyst Larry Jant on Smoky Hills PBS. And we are excited for some football. These young men have worked hard all week, Larry, and now they get to put their work to test here on the field this afternoon. Yes, Jeremy, they've had seven practices. So it's a short week. You expect maybe the defense to be ahead of the offense. That's a lot of, a lot of things to put in there. So the coach is trying to keep everything Kind of simple. They're smart. They've played the game. They come in in good shape. And the coaches I've talked to is, is quite pleased with uh, the entire attitude, the work ethic, and how quickly they caught on uh, to everything that they want to do, the scheme of things that each coach and staff wants to uh, uh, promote today. You look at these teams, and obviously they're set up to – to to succeed uh, they are it is an all-star game but you look at right now they're you know they're playing in temperatures that are near 90 degrees and loaded up with pads and but the mental aspect will come into play as the physical starts to wear down a little bit you're correct and it, they, it's a big important thing you know to probably keep them hydrated many times probably has some water breaks don't you suppose just by yep. the zebras will give them one i would think so I, I mean, we get water break. Day. Yeah, we do. But we're not out there in the elements like they are. No, but we're older. Well, that's true. <laughs> so, what what are the keys today? I mean, you always, obviously, turnovers. You don't want turnovers. You don't want to give up big plays. What are some of the things outside of that that some of the coaches have been talking about this week? Well, the offensive keys for Alex McMillan is, uh, number one, run the ball, no turnovers, and number three, control the time possession. So that means he wants to control it and move the sticks, keep the, keep the sticks going, gets a lot of first downs. On, on defense, the East team, they want that, remember when he said tackle, tackle, tackle. And then he said get a turnover, and then, of course, make big plays, uh, no big plays allowed, try not to keep that. And in the last possession of the game to win it, he wants his own stud, Clayton, uh, J Jaden uh, Garrison from Little River to make the last play to win a game. That's the East Blue Team, Alex McMillan, head coach. And it looks like the West has won the toss and they have elected to receive. The West in the red uniforms with the white 
lettering and numbers. The East in the blue uniforms with the white lettering and numbers, and we are about set to go. So the West will receive, the East will kick off, and we'll see the West offense and the East defense. And speaking of the West, then Jeremy, by their keys to win a game by Lance Barr and his assistants is protect the ball, play real fast, and score often. That's pretty aggressive. And the defense, they want to be physical, uh, tackle well, and then, of course, have eight guys uh, having a party at the football. And if it goes to the last thing, they want to have Cade Retsky from uh, Wichita County, Leote, in the last position to win the game. And uh, it might go down to that. So we are set and ready to go. Back deep for the West All-Stars. Number 20, Edwin Robledo from Nest City. Also over there on the far side is Blake Goodman from Attica. Graham Stevens from Little River will tee it up. Here comes the kick, and that one is not going to be returned. It's a field goal. Well, if he could get points for kicking it through the uprights, Jim Stevens just scored three. But you don't, so it just feels good. So that was uh, Grant Stevens from Little River? Graham Stevens. Uh, uh, Graham, I meant. Sorry. Played so, for Kevin Ayers, state champion last year. So first and 10 for the West All-Stars. We'll get your starters after this first play. Kate Ritzke, the quarterback from Wichita County, and throws it out in the flat. That was intended for Clevin Huggins out of Maxville. That's incomplete. So the other starters, Tanner Miller from Spearville on the center. The guards are A.C. Hermosillo and Harlan Obioha. Noah Phillips at a tight end. And Aaron Skidmore from South Gray will get your defensive starters after this on second down and 10. Ritzke going to run it. Goes right side, looks for the edge, and he is going to be upended. Cut down. Trent by Rogers one. from Chase County on the tackle. He's out there along with the aforementioned Graham Stevens, Eli Campbell from Sedan, Isaac Miser from Madison. Tristan Young from Bennington, Jarek Wykey from Clifton, Clifton Clyde, and Hunter Eagle from Madison. Ryan Wolgram also from Madison. Ritzke to throw it. Gramblin, he's going to run it. He's going to have a first down and then some. Up across the 30 to the 34-yard line. Kate Ritzke for 16 yards and a first down. You're going to see them on a lot of zone reads, a spread tight, and they come in zone. And they're right to the line of scrimmage. There's a run to the left side. Look out. Some running room. Knocked out of bounds. Jace Hamel from Hill City to the 22-yard line. That is a pickup of 24 yards and a first down. Wow. That's a speed when he got the outside. And Skidmore with the carry. He stacked up. Isaac Miser from Madison with the initial contact. Yeah. Gain of a yard. Aaron Skidmore for the South Gray Rails had. 1,334 yards this year and 537 yards of passing for 36 touchdowns. Second and nine, there's a throw out in the flat. Catch is made. And not a whole lot there for Trace Tassett. Looks like he might have picked up four. It'll bring up third and five. Yeah, Trace Tassett had over 1,390 yards rushing, 24 touchdowns. 
Playing a little running back in the slot today for the the West All-Stars. 5'9", 145-pounder. Spearville Lancers. Third down and five. Ball at the 18. Motion man is Tassett. Ritzke going right. Gets a block from Obi all high inside the 10. Lowers more. his shoulder and gets blasted out of bounds. Over there on the far side, Mason Mills from Oswego on the tackle. But that's a carry for 11 yards, and it's a first and goal. McCade Risky with the ball in his hands a lot. Running back, flanking both sides for Risky. He's going to go right up the gut, and he is hit and dropped after a gain of one. He didn't make much, did he? Aiden Rudolph in on the tackle from Clifton Clyde. Play for Russ Steinbrack up there, the Clifton Clyde Eagles. 6'1", 190 pounder. The second down and goal from the five. Ritzke again looking right side and he is cut down. Of course, the offensive key is to protect the ball, play fast, score option. And they didn't have a very good blocking on that scheme. Hunter, Hunter Engle in on the tackle. So it's third and goal from the eight. Ritzke, nobody with him this time in the backfield. Going to be a play action pass, probably. He's going to throw it. Has time. Now he's getting rushed, throws it up the field. It's incomplete. And it's going to bring up second. fourth down and goal. Almost looked like a horse collar bringing him down there. Yeah. And that little old Trent Rogers is the one that broke up the pass, though, in the end zone. But you're right. Will they try a field goal? No. No, no field goal. Ritzke flanked on both sides as he lines up in the backfield with 8.35 to go in the first quarter. He's going to throw it. Lofts it towards the end zone, and it's intercepted. Intercepted in the end zone. Ryan Wolgram from Madison with the interception, and so... Ritzke just trying to make something happen on fourth down. So the East defense a little bend, but not break theory there, Larry Jantz. Yes, sir. And, of course, that's exactly what Alex, Alex McMillian, and he's coached there, assistant coaches Shelby Hopus from uh, Canton Galva Eagles, Kevin Ayers from Little River Indian Redskins, and Brody Vandergriff from Chase County Bulldogs. Now the East offense, a run down the sidelines, look out, all the way for the touchdown, Jaden Garrison picked up where he left off in the state championship game, 65 yards and a score. When he got to that corner, he kicked it in overdrive, and off he went. Great job by... Good old Jaden Garrison, six foot two, hundred eighty pounder from Little River Redskins. Well, it didn't take him long. Took him like one. Took play. him nine seconds to go sixty-five yards, though. Come on. <laughs> well, he's faster than us, anyway. Yes, that that is true. It would take me longer than nine seconds to run sixty-five yards. Yes. So now they'll go for the two-point conversion. Little motion. Garrison left. He's hit. Lowers his shoulder. And he did not went. get in. His knee went down early. He got hit early. Still powered through that initial tackle, but could not get to the end zone. So with 8.16 to go in the first quarter, your score is the East All-Stars 6 and the West All-Stars nothing. So... Man, when you give up a play like that, Larry Jance, all of a sudden, 
you're like, we could be in trouble today. <laughs> yes, we could. Because they couldn't seem, the Red had the, all sorts had the ball for quite a while on the first drive. And then get down there and, and they get the ball intercepted. But that was incredible by Jaden Garrison. 265 carries this year, over 1,677 yards and 37 touchdowns. Add another one to it. In passing, he had 37 out of 58 this year for 721 yards, and they had 13 touchdown passing touchdowns. He three. so he's responsible for 50 turn. I mean, 50 touchdowns for the Kevin Ayers Little River Redskins. It's pretty amazing. Graham Stevens, speaking of Little River. To kick things off in that one. Looked like it cleared it as well. So I think Graham Stevens is determined to make sure there's no kick returns in this game That's by right. the West All Stars. We're going to start this game with touchbacks. Well, now will the West be able to answer? How would it feel to go up against Harlan Obio Hot, 6'11", 285 pounds? I like, I'm a, like I'm a big guy, and I just have to look up at him when I talk to him. You've got well, to be kidding me. Most people do look up to <laughs> yeah, him. There are not very many that look, look down to him. No. First and 10. Pass it in motion. Ritzke to the outside. Huggins with the catch. Breaks. Oh. Almost breaks the tackle, and then a little healthy help over there on the far side. Tyler Good in on the tackle, Ryan Wolgram as well. And you're talking about Harlan. I asked him yesterday uh, what size of shoes you wear, and he says 18. And I told him, I said, that Yadoka played for KU, wore 19s. Second down and five. There's a... Shovel pass that's incomplete. Lucky it wasn't intercepted almost. Incomplete, Very intended complete. for Skidmore. And he got hit immediately. It'll bring up third down. Third and five, Ritzke. Making some th moves. Looking up the field. Throws it out there. Oh and it's oh. incomplete. Oh. Intercepted. Oh, Huggins had it and just lost it. Uh-oh. And then we're going to have an uh, unsportsmanlike conduct penalty called afterwards. I think that's going to go on Huggins. I, yep. As John, right. John Webster, one of the assistant coaches, got out there immediately to get him. It's got to be on 24. So we'll see. So Huggins, I believe, gets the call. And right now over there on the far side, Obi Alha is with Huggins right now. The Wolgram with the interception. So Cleveland Huggins gets the the penalty, and all of a sudden, East All Stars with the first and ten. Second interception for Wolgram today. Garrison, Braden Collins, oh man. The tackle was made by, by uh, excuse me, by Brody McDowell. But Braden Collins got the better end of that deal. Yes, he did. He's 6'2". 215 pounds running back. He's a replacement from Cade Norris of Valley Falls in this football game. 
Second and four, Collins again. He is wrapped up immediately. Manny Chavez in on the tackle. Lots of one, it's third down and five. And I could be mistaken, Jeremy, but I think Braden Collins, he won the 220 powerlift weightlifting this last year, the coach said. So he's well, a strong he's dude enough, and he's going to go to Hutch Juco next year. I wouldn't be surprised. He's got size to him. Third down, five. Motion. Garrison's going to keep it. Going right. He's got right. Inside the 10. Inside the five. Touchdown. Jaden Garrison powers his way into the end zone. And with 5.55 to go in the first quarter, it's 12 to nothing East. That's a great job. I just run over that. They thought they had him tackled about the two-yard line, but he bulldozed over him. Great job by Jaden Garrison. And the East All-Stars go up. 12 to nothing with the extra point attempt coming up. Garrison, two carries, 70 yards, two touchdowns. Not too pretty shabby. Good, pretty good percentage for him right now. And Collins is cut down short of the goal line. Two-point conversion is no good, but with 5.55 to go in the first quarter, the East All-Stars on top by a score of 12 to nothing. Well, here we go. It's answer time for the West All-Stars. Yes, it is. So Jaden Garrison showing what he can do. Couple carries, couple touchdowns. He has 77 yards unofficially. He's had quite a year, hasn't he? I mean, his team went, they won what, uh, Division One eight man down at Newton. And now he's playing very well today, like where he left off. Yeah, it's like he hasn't taken off the pads yet. Just kept him on, knowing he's going to play in this game. And later on, he'll play in the Shrine Bowl game. Now the question is, will Graham Stevens be able to put it through the uprights again? Uh, it's a little short Answer. of the uprights this time. But uh, same result, touchback. Same result, touchback. Three kicks, three touchbacks. So with 5.55 to go, first half, first quarter, excuse me, the West All-Stars will get the football back down by two scores. Yeah, Lance Barr and Grant, I mean, Brant Douglas, Pat Haxton and John Webster need to get the, uh, those Red All-Stars on the right pattern here. Comes a run to the left side, Ritzke. Pretty good run. He's ran yeah. out of bounds over here on the near side. Aiden Rudolph on the tackle. Gain of nine yards. It's second and one. Unofficially, Cade Ritzke, six carries, 38 yards. There's a direct snap to Skidmore. He needed one. And I believe he got he just it. what he needed. He needed a yard. Aaron Skidmore had the 1,334 yards rushing for a South Gray running Rebels this year and passed for 537 yards, 36 touchdowns. First down and 10. Ritzke this time. Goes up the gut. Cuts it back. Decent running room, and he's tough. Yeah. Wolgram in on the tackle. Also coming in was Tristan Young from Bennington. 
Brought down at the 32, a gain of seven on the play. Gain of seven yards on the play to the 32-yard line. Second down and offense, they liked a lot of zone read, spread it, and tight. They got tight formation now. There's a handoff. Hamel yeah. spinning close, but I believe just shy of the first down. He got two, and he needed three. Yeah, Isaac Miser was in on the tackle, the linebacker, number 44 for Madison Bulldogs. 85 tackles this year, one fumble, forced fumble, two fumble recoveries. He's been a three-year starter for Alex McMillian. Mitchell's timeout, we might have a equipment issue. Yeah. So, so Graham again, Stevens Brady Collins. stepped off. Braden Collins stepped in. Third down and one. Tacit in motion. Ritzke will keep it. He has the first down and then some fumbles the football. Who has it? Everybody's pointing different directions. And it will remain with the West All-Stars. Lucky break then and then, because Isaac Miser was all over it. First and 10 West, Noah Phillips flips to the right side of the formation. Now back left. 342 and counting. Risky to throw. In some trouble. He is hit and he is dropped. Yep. Coming in was Tristan Young from Bennington again. And boy, Risky gave up a lot of yardage on that play all the way back inside the 40 to the 33 yard line, a loss of eight. Yeah, great job by Bennington. Tristan Young, 5'11", uh, 185 pounder from Bennington. To the West after getting a first down, going the wrong direction. Yeah, like it's over that second and 20, huh? Second Close. and 18. Yeah. Ritzke wrapped no. up, dropped. Nowhere to go. In on the tackle was Hunter Engel. And another loss back inside the 30 to the 29. Yeah, Hunter Engel is uh, 57 tackles, one interception, six sacks, three fumble, four throw force fumbles, one fumble recovery, four pass deflection. Had quite a year for the uh, Alex McMillian Hamilton Bulldogs. They're down 21. Ritzke in trouble. He's going to run it, trying to get some of it back, which he does, but well short of the first down. He picks up eight. It's fourth and 14. <clears throat> Looks like they're going to go for it. Unless they're going to do a quick kick. Fourth and 14, a minute and 32 seconds to go. First quarter. Pass it in motion. Ritzke going to throw it down the field. Huggins is open. He has it at the 20. Inside the 15, all the way down to the 13-yard line. Good throw, good catch. Nobody was within 10 yards from him, so he got open. Missed assignment by the East Blue All-Stars. 30 yards and a first down. Yeah, Huggins was all by himself over there. Yes, he was. So the West is driven deep again. Gidmore right side. 
He is submarined. Look like Graham Stevens in on the tackle. Bring up second and eight. Yeah, that uh, Cade Risky this year for Wichita County Leote team had uh, six interceptions for the year. Ritzke's going to carry it. Keeps it inside the five, and he leans in for the touchdown. Great job. Cade Ritzke from 11 yards out, so the gamble on fourth and long pays off as they get into the end zone to pull within one score. Yes, sir, does a great job. And, of course, on last possession to win the game, that's who Lance Barr wants to have the pigskin in his hand is Cade Ritzke, number 14. Ritzke again. Man, oh, he, he got blasted. Hunter Engel went on the tackle. So with 23 seconds to go in the first quarter, 12 to 6 is the score. So conversions haven't been a thing today, but touchdowns have. Yeah, that's a great job there by Tunger Engel just shooting the gap from a defensive end. Today, at 57 tackles, one interception, three forced fumbles, one fumble recovery, four pass deflections, and six sacks for Alex McMillian's uh, Madison Bulldogs this year. And on the other flip side, Cade Ritzke, you know, at number 14, he's had a pretty good year for Brant Douglas, the state runner-ups, uh, 130 out of 181. For 1,865 yards, 36 touchdowns, and six pass interceptions. Cade Ritzke, number 14, 105 165 pounder. Pretty tough quarterback. So now their defense is going to have to step up. They've Absolutely. Given up a couple touchdowns already. But now the offense for the West has answered, and the East offense, which has been rolling, will get another opportunity. I wonder if he can kick it in the end zone and have a touchback. Oh, yeah. We'll see. Oh, it's going to uh -oh. be an onside kick. It's on Did the ground, it? and they have it. The West All-Stars have covered it. A little trickery. Well, there you go. The answer to that question didn't go in the end zone it for did touchback. Not. Did I it? think they no. prefer this. Yeah, yeah. So first down and 10 from the 38-yard line. So the offense is back out. A flea flicker looking down the field. Pass it. Oh. Had to go through his hands incomplete. There were three guys there defensively, and Ritzke dropped it in there, and Tassett could not hold on. Yep. Trace Tatson try to get effort. 5'9", 145 pounds. He needed to be a little bit taller that time, maybe. If he was Obi Ohas size, he would have caught it. That's right. Absolutely. Good point. Second and 10. He's going to throw another deep ball. Phillips has it inside the 10, brought down at the two-yard line, a 36-yard Completion in its first down and goal. That went to the tight end. Noah Phillips, six foot one, 190 pounders from Argonia. Nine catches, 34 yards, and a touchdown this year. See if they get the snap off before the clock runs out. Ritzke gonna roll to the left. He He's is in. Cross it, didn't he? In for the touchdown. Yep. Cade Ritzke on the final play of the first quarter has tied it up from two yards out. This has been an amazing fast action game. It's quick hitters both ways. And we are tied at 12. Ritzke, another shuttle pass. Oh, I don't think he made it. And that one did not make it, so another conversion fails. But we are through one quarter of play. Your score, 
Division two West twelve. Division or Division One West twelve. Division One East twelve. We're back with your second quarter after this timeout on Smoky Hills PBS. Production of the eight man all star game is made possible by Heartland Tri State Bank, locally owned, community focused, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Simpson Farm Enterprises of Hayes, Ransom, Great Bend, and Beloit. Leitner Buildings in Hayes and Atwood. Hoxie State Insurance, serving the Hoxie area. G and L Pharmacy, serving the Nest City area. Garden of Eden Specialty Grocery Store, Little River. Active Balance Chiropractic and Acupuncture Clinic in Atwood, Bird City, and Goodland. At Next Tech Wireless, we're proud to invest in Kansas communities. We have nearly 50 locations across the state to support your wireless needs. We're friends, we're neighbors, we are Kansas. And welcome back to Trojan Field in Beloit. 12-12 is our score as we go to the second quarter, Jeremy McGuire along with analyst Larry Jansen. Larry, uh, boy, fireworks, both teams. And some chances being taken on the West squad going for it on fourth and long early in the game. And then the onside kick, they might want to go out west to the casino and, and yeah. lay some money down. Yeah, it's a good day to hit the casino maybe for the West. Well, that's a uh, the onside kick caught him by surprise. I know that, but they were back. They were they were going to peel back and block for a return. They weren't expecting it. No, they weren't. So here comes the kickoff from Blake Goodman. This one's deep, and that one In goes the through zone. the end zone barely, and is a touchback. It was a good corner kick. Yeah, good placement. Sure. So first and 10 from the 15 for the East All-Stars. Been the Jaden Garrison show so far. Two carries, 77 yards, and two touchdowns. Look for more of it, too. Play coming in from the sideline. Aiden Rudolph from Clifton Clyde brings it in. Rudolph back to pass, airs it out down the field. Just a little bit too much. Jaden Carrison on the receiving end that time. Garrison will come out and get a breather, as will Isaac Elkins. Second down and 10. Rudolph, left side, has a block, has the sideline, and he will go. Rudolph to the end zone for the touchdown. 65 yards and a score. Yes, sir. Great job by Clifton Glide Eagle. Aiden and the Rudolph, number 22, 6'1", 190, played for Russ Steinbreck and had uh, two catches for 74 yards and one touchdown this year. But rushing-wise, 39 carries, 470 yards, and 11 touchdowns. Add another one. Aiden now, Rudolph. Now they'll go for the two-point conversion. Yeah. So far, three touchdowns. All three conversion attempts have failed. Garrison back in at the quarterback spot. He's going to run it. Goes left side towards the goal line, and he will be shut down. On the conversion attempt, running the ball on the left side, number 10. 12. And on the tackle is Brody McDowell from Hill City. 
Great job by him playing linebacker today. 89 tackles, one interception, two fumble recoveries by Brody McDowell, the six foot one, 155 pounder. Out of Hill City, Ringneck country. So the East All-Stars, Jaden Garrison, two carries, 77 yards, two touchdowns. Braden Collins, two carries, five yards. Aiden Rudolph, one carry, 65 yards. Two 65-yard touchdown mm -hmm. runs for the East All-Stars. Yeah. I'd say big plays have been a part of their attack today. Yes, sir. And, of course, the defense, D1, says be physical, tackle well, and eight guys to the football. And they're going to be mainly playing a 3-2 defense, sometimes a 4-2. And then for the East All-Stars, Jeremy, they want to run the ball. They don't want to have any turnovers, control the time of possession. I don't think they've done that yet. But they score too quick, or they have. But they run a spider-type offense, they call them, and the banana plays is favorite plays. Out of the pistol, that means a one-back set, and a pro, and they also run the twins. Stevens kickoff, and it's through the end zone, and another touchback. So first down and 10 from the 15 yard line. West Hall Stars back on the field. Aid Ritzke has led the attack. 12 carries already for 59 yards. And he has scored two touchdowns. Twins to the far side. Tass it in the slot. He'll motion. And it's going to be risky. Options it to Tass it. Cuts it up. Leans forward. Gets across the Makes 15. Brought down at the 18. A gain of three. Good yards. A little misdirection there. And a pitch out to the right side. Good yards. West All-Stars not wasting any time. Left side get to Skidmore. Leans across the 20 to the 21. Picks up three more. It'll bring up third and four. Yeah. Making the tackle on the play for East number 54, Jared Whitey. Gain of three more yards on the play to the 21-yard line, making it third down and four. Ritzke, keeper, nowhere, That's dropped right. in the backfield. Critical play now is fourth down. Graham Stevens on the tackle, no gain on the play for Ritzke. It looks like they are going to punt the football away. Yeah, and then somebody wasn't out there. Huggins a little bit late onto the field. Rovledo. A rugby style kick. That is way out of bounds. Just now we will have to spot that thing up. I'm guessing about the 31. That's where they'll put it. Close enough. So first down and 10 with 9.59 to go here in the second quarter. Boy, the uh, West All-Stars defensively have got to stop giving up the edge in the long touchdown runs. The East All-Stars, if I'm them, I continue to run it out there until they prove they can stop it. Yeah, they're not stopping the corners. If they turn the corner, they're gone so far. <clears throat> Of course, that's what they want to do. They want to run the football and no turnovers and control the time possession. There's a fake Garrison, handoff. wide open. Who do you want to throw it to? Which one? To the 10, to the 5, and a touchdown. Owen, Owen Eidman from Eichmann. Chase County 
into the end zone, and that one goes from 50 or 49 yards out. Odin Eidemann, 6'1", 165 pounder from Chase County. He, could, he had two people to pick from. All you got to do is hit him. There's two of them wide open. None of another red defensive guys around him. That is what you call a broken coverage right there. Yeah, I think so. So Eidemann like into the end zone with his first catch of the ball game. Again, from 49 yards out. Jaden Garrison has run for two scores, and he's passed for another. Now we'll see if the first conversion is completed here. Out in the flat. No. Uh, Aiden Rudolph looking for Garrison is incomplete. With 9.50 to go here in the second quarter, 24-12 to 12 is the score. And Larry Jant, it was... Two quick touchdowns for the East, two quick touchdowns for the West, two more quick touchdowns for the East. And they're up. Yep. I think we have a pattern developing. Well, we're going to find out. And you know it's a little bit toasty out there right now. Yes, it is. For those young men. I bet it's past 90, isn't it? Nine, it is. According to my app on my phone, it is 90 degrees right now. And that's not a on the wind out of the northeast at eight miles an hour. So not helping a whole lot as far as keeping it cool out there. <laughs> and I tell you what, I just saw Stu Chance take his hat off and put some water in it and stuck it back on his head. No referee. I don't blame him. No, me neither. And there's the kick deep into the end zone, and it is the touchback. So 9.50 to go in the first half. 24 to 12 is the score. Will be first down and 10 from the 15 yard line for the West All Stars. First and 10 from the 15. Ritzke all by himself in the backfield. Going to throw it. Airs it out. Has a man out there. Broken knocked up. away. Boy, Great Ryan Wolgram was beat. But made it up and made a great play where that would have been a huge play for the West. Yeah, that's a great pass deflection there by Ryan Wolgram. 5'8", 167 pounder from, from good old Madison Bulldog country. Second 10, throw out in the flat. Tacit with the carry, got spun around John Elway style. Picks up nine yards, and it's going to bring up third and one. Ritzke going to run it to the edge, breaks a tackle, and then we'll have a first down. Stevens in on the tackle, a gain of 10 on the play, and a first down for the West. Yeah, Graham, Graham Stevens had 135 tackles this year, two interceptions, three fumble recoveries from Little River. Right back to the line, Tassett. Again, and he's met Wolgram on the tackle. Gain of five on the play. Yeah. Ryan's done a great job for those Madison Bullets. We talked about him earlier. 33 tackles, four interceptions, three pass deflections for the Madison Bulldogs this year. Pump fake. Pump fake. He's Looks up him. the field looking for Tacit again, Wolgram was not falling for the pump fake. It had to have a 9.4 speed to catch that ball. And that's all the coach, my old coach friend back in the 50s. Nobody since then has done that. Third down and five. 
8.41 to play. First half. Well, oh, uh -oh. that pass is intercepted. Hunter Engel intercepts the shovel pass. It was intended for Skidmore, who didn't act yeah. like he was even ready for the ball. That's right. And right there was Hunter Engel. So the Madison Bulldogs with the trifecta of interceptions in the first half. Sure. Way to go, Hunter. A 210, uh, a 5'10", 200-pounder, 57 tackles, six sacks this year, four pass deflections. He's been incredible for the Madison Bulldogs. So first down and 10. Garrison back in the backfield at the quarterback. Braden Collins behind him, a little pistol formation. Collins will keep it right side, and he is spun down. Matthew Delaney from Nest City on the tackle. Uh, getting, getting back to Hunter Engel, he... In 219 and 221, two years in a world back to back, he was a 199 pound powerlifting champion in the state of Kansas. So he he held a clean clean record, clean press at 330 pounds. Pretty tough little kid. So second down and six. Garrison, right up the gut, tries to spin out of the tackle. But Brody McDowell brings him down, a pickup of six yards on the play, and it's a first down. That's a good play fake there to Collins, and then kicked the ball, just a zone reads all it was. And that's what they like to do. Run the ball, no turnovers, and control the time possession, which they're doing right now. They do it out of three different sets, the pistol, the pro, and the twin sets. 727 and counting. First half. East up 24 12 with the football. Doing a pro set now. Got the one back set. Fake Garrison keeps it. He's tough on the edge and he is going to be knocked down. Delaney there. Also, Lucas Webster with a little help. And I think Pick Ethan Simons came in there. Ethan Salmon's had Second some down of that. And five. 56 tackles, two interceptions from the South Gray Runner Rebel. Ethan Salmon, 6'1", 160 pounder. Helped the team out on defense that play. So now what do you got? Alex McMillian and Shelby Hoppus. Garrison throws it out in the flat. Well short of his intended receiver, which was Garrett Robinson. And Shelby Hoppus is their offensive coordinator for the Blue All-Stars, the East All-Stars. Uh, they were on fire the other day in practice. So... So and gonna we're going to have timeout. a timeout. We'll take it with you. 6.28 to go. First half. We're back after this timeout on Smoky Hills PBS. Here we go, three, two, and one. 6.28 to go first half. Kansas Division I 
eight-man all-star game. Jeremy McGuire and Larry Jantz on Smoky Hills PBS. Third down, five for the East All-Stars. Aiden Rudolph all by himself. Collins to the far side. Campbell to the near side. Garrison in motion. And Rudolph is hit short of the first down. Picked up three. It's fourth down and two. A little tricky that time. Bring old Aiden Rudolph back to be the quarterback and had uh, Jaden Garrison kind of run him in motion from the slot or wings position. So we'll call it fourth down and a long two. Boy, they've this going to be pretty pass. short on a. Hey, look for a look for a power play on this one. They brought Engel in there from the de from the Dolphin. He's going to play some offense. Look at this set. They barely get it off, and that ball is loose. It's on the ground, and who's recovered it? It doesn't really matter. We're just going to say a turnover and a fumble on D1 East. Keaton Luttrell on the recovery. Well, the other day in practice, I can tell you, they didn't have any miscues on that. And they bring that Hunter Engel in there. And, man, oh, man, they, they either run him up the gut or they fake it and they throw out a long, deep pass off of it, some little play action passes. They worked on that play quite a bit. But today they had a miscue. Caden White actually on the recovery on that play. But, man, the West defense needed that. They would have been in trouble. Yes, they would have been. Now can their offense take advantage of the East mistake? Pass out in the flat. Skidmore continuing to go and finally is carried out of bounds at the 21-yard line. Gain of... Or excuse me, the 31, a gain of five on the play. Quick direct snap to Hamel. He's going Whoa, strong. Go. He's going to have himself a first down. Looked like a rugby scrum for a moment, and Hamel popped out of there and picked up seven and a first down. Might have called in the bulldozer. First and 10. Ritzke going right side. Gets a lead block from Skidmore. A big out game. To the, out to the 36-yard line. Gain of eight. It'll bring up second and two. Tackle by old Trent Rogers, a five-foot, 645-pounder from Chase County, Cottonwood Falls area. Third down. Or second down, three. Ritzke picks up three. It's a first down. Graham Stevens, who is in on the tackle, coming off the field. Yeah. First and ten. 31-yard line, four and a half to go. Another direct snap. Up the middle, nothing going. Skidmore on the carry. Picked up a yard. Five carries, eight yards for Skidmore. Ritzke. Upended, boy, fine play. Wolgram really yeah. attacked the line of scrimmage over there on the far side and just didn't allow Ritzke to get no, Ryan, much of anywhere. Picked up one. Ryan Wolgram does a great job. Five foot eight, 167 pounder from Madison Bulldog Country. 
Had 33 tackles this year and four interceptions. Third down and eight. Ritzke to throw it out there, man. Open! Oh, touchdown! Oh, catch. We're a catch. Skidmore brings it in somehow, some way. That one goes from 29 yards out. And did they never need it. Great job by Aaron Skidmore. It make old Grandpa Gary Skidmore quite proud. I would think so. And his dad, Jeff. Left side, two-point conversion. Tacit yeah. is in. Yeah. And their first conversion of the night or of the day. And with 3.34 to go in the first half, your score is East 24. And the West 20. Yeah, Aaron Skidmore's grandpa played from my old high school, Cimarron Blue Jays. They just moved south in the South Gray running rebel country. Not too far then? No, just 18 miles. 12 south and 6 Mac back west. You, you sure can get about there. that? You can get there from there. You can get there from here? Yeah, you can. From anywhere else? Yes, you can. All right. If you go through Dodge City, you can get there, too. I'll bet you if you went through Greensburg, you could get there. You got to be. It's a little tricky. You might miss that junction in the road. You could go through. Maxville. You could go to Kansas City, well, down could. to Pittsburgh, right. and then across and end up back and in Montezuma. In Albuquerque. <laughs> <laughs> Made the wrong turn. Yeah. Left turn at Albuquerque. Yeah. 3.34 to go here in this first half. Boy, the, the West All-Stars needed that, Larry Jans. They had got back in it, tied it at 12, and next thing you know, they were down 24-12. That touchdown, the conversion, brings them to 10-4. And somebody popped their balloon in the middle there, didn't they? Garrison uh -oh. on the return. Gotta watch him. Gets to the outside and says, ah, I don't want to get drilled here, so let's go. Go out of bounds. Yep. So first down and 10 from the 28 yard line, 328 to go in the first half. A lot of points here, 24 to 20. Yeah, they had old Garrett Robin, Robinson bring it from Burnagame bringing the play in here. So let's see what they drilled up. Garrison to Collin off the left side. <laughs> he got hit hard by Manny Chavez, and Collins just got right back up. And there's a little John going on out there. That's, uh, you know, these guys haven't really been able to hit this week. You know, last so week this when old good. Manny... Manny Chavez and the uh, the West D2, they were playing it. Oh, was he lighting them up? He had about six or eight plays in a row. Had a good practice, good camp. Uh-oh. Second and four, and then that's going to be a first down. Is look like Hamel that came across. Yeah, for 23. Jay five Samuel. yards and a first down. Playing the nose guard today, old Jay says. I think he's probably just too close to the ball, Jeremy. Yeah. Huh? That's, why else would you jump? Had a hard time seeing it. Yeah. Ball nearing midfield. Garrison, he's going to keep it, looking for a block, and is going to be pushed out of bounds. McDowell, Robledo there, and it is a pickup to the 35, a gain of six. He did a great job carrying out that fake because I think most of them thought he'd handed it off. Uh, 
That's why he's a good quarterback. Carry that to fake. You know, and you got to do it the same every time. That's right. Just like you don't have the ball, you got to run the same as if you had it. Because defenses will key on that if you don't. And if one or two guys tackle you and you don't have the ball, your buddies might have scored a touchdown. Look at it. Garrison again. again. Cuts it up. Man, he is. Shifty. Very shifty. <clears throat> Going to pick up six. Robledo on the tackle. Looked like Cyrus Green had a piece as well. Gain of six on the play, first down. Yeah, Cyrus Green is, of course, 5'11", 210, 210. From Rollins County after Natwood, 90 tackles, one interception, fumble recovery this year. Cyrus Green, number 34, playing linebacker today. First and 10, clock under two minutes to play in the first half. Garrison hands it off to Collins, and he is stacked up at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. And in there again was Cyrus Green. Five carries, 15 yards today for Braden Collin. We have a timeout on the field. We'll take it with you. 120 to play, first half. We're back after this on Smoky Hills PBS. At this time, we would like to recognize former players who have played the 8-man All-Star game. So all previous 8-man All-Star game participants, please stand up. Three, two, one. 120 to go first half. It's second down and 10 for the East All-Stars at the West 29-yard line. 120 to play in the first half. 24-20, East on top. And we've got a whistle snap, from the uh, official and had to snap back strap. up. And we're oh, ready yeah. to go. Garrison left, ducks under, and guess what? Cyrus Green again. Pick up of three, it's third and seven. Yeah, was a pretty good effort there by Cyrus Green. He had some little help by the other guys. Finally got him cornered in there. I don't know if I know what they had brought Isaac three guys in. Yeah. Isaac Elkins, Oswego, Garrett Robinson, Burling game. Third down and seven, 35 seconds to play. Uh-oh. Fumble snap, Garrison keeps on his feet. He's going to go left at the 20, the 15, and is brought bounds. down out of bounds. I think it's by Gavin. I think it might have been out of, out of bounds hit by Gavin Euling from Decatur Community in this case. So a pickup of 11, and then they'll tack more on with the penalty. That's too bad. They'll take it down to the four and a half. First 
25 seconds to go in the first half. The East trying to make it a two-score game again. First down and goal. Collins, he goes Ooh. right side, and he will walk into the uh -oh. end zone, but hold everything. There is a flag on the play. Could be an angle block, but 21 right there, Jeremy. Little laundry. Holding, that's the first penalty of the ball game against the East. And that's a big one. Takes a touchdown off the board. Yeah, it's holding there by Owen Eldman, or Eidman, Chase County. I think he was going to make it anyway. Didn't have to hold him. Yeah, I think or so, too. Him back. Unless that hold was really early that yeah. kept the D end in. Because Collins had a head of steam going up. He was... It was not going to be denied. So now first and goal from the 14. Garrett, oh, Fumble. Bad snap. bad snap. Lost the three on the play, and they'll have to use their last time out. With five seconds left, 15 seconds left to go in the first half. So now you really reduce the things you can do. You have to either have something at the sideline or something in the end zone. If there's anything that I, is within the field of play where you're brought down, you will not be able to get another playoff. I would, I would look for a run pass option, like fake a quick handoff, and then let them roll out a little bit and give. Give old uh, Jaden Garrison a little bit more time. So the ball will be on the right hash at the 17 yard line. So Garrison, if he is rolling to throw the football, he's on the short side of the field as far as rolling and making it easy. You can still roll to the left and throw right handed. It's just more difficult. That's true. It's tougher to get your shoulders squared up and your feet just right. If uh, you're a right-handed quarterback and you're doing everything to the left side. So we'll see what they call now. Shelby Hoppus is the offensive coordinator for the East All-Stars. Uh, and he's quite vocal. So you got Rudolph to throw it. Towards the end zone, it's incomplete. Pressure from Jace Hamel. And it's going to bring up third down and goal. Thad Rudolph throw that one. Yeah, it did. Going for Garrison. Now we'll see if they... Have Rudolph throw it again, or if they're going to get the ball in Garrison's hand. I wouldn't be a bit surprised you wouldn't see the Bumble Ruski type thing, or you know, there's only got one back, one quarterback, so that plays out. Yeah. Rudolph keeps it right side. He's going to be brought down. At that, the 10, is that the last time he out? picked up seven, and he does not. There's no more timeouts remaining. That's it. And that's the end of the first half. So your score at halftime, eight-man Division One East 24, Division One West 20. We're back with your second half after this timeout on Smoky Hills PBS. Production of the eight-man all-star game is made possible by GBT Communications, Hoxie State Insurance, serving the Hoxie area, Crustbuster Speed King, incorporated in Spearville and Dodge City, Kansas, Garden of Eden Specialty Grocery Store, Little River, Farmer State Bank, Galva, Kansas. 
At Next Tech Wireless, we're proud to invest in Kansas communities. We have nearly 50 locations across the state to support your wireless needs. We're friends, we're neighbors, we are Kansas. MNM Seeds, channel seedsmanship at work, serving the Glen Elder area. Programming on Smoky Hills PBS is made possible in part by an underwriting grant from Nextech, providing the area with top-notch broadband, business, technology, and advertising solutions. Nextech proudly supports public broadcasting and all of its ventures, impacting the economic growth of rural communities. And welcome back to Trojan Field in Beloit on Smoky Hills PBS at halftime of the Kansas 8-man Division I All-Star Game. The Division I East squad with the 24 to 20 lead. It's now time for a look at our halftime stats brought to you exclusively by Cunningham Telephone and Cable, serving North Central Kansas. First for the West, the West with 20 points, 24 yards and penalties, nine first downs, 123 passing yards, 126 rushing yards, 200 and 49 total yards overall. The East, 24 points, 10 yards in penalties, three first downs, 49 passing yards, 201 rushing yards for a total of 250 yards. Again, your first half stats brought to you by Cunningham Telephone and Cable, serving North Central Kansas. Your score, the East All-Stars 24, the West All-Stars 20, we're back with your second half after this timeout on Smoky Hills PBS. Production of the eight-man all-star game is made possible by Simpson Farm Enterprises of Hayes, Ransom, Great Bend, and Beloit. Leitner Buildings in Hayes and Atwood. G and L Pharmacy, serving the Nest City area. Active Balance Chiropractic and Acupuncture Clinic in Atwood, Bird City, and Goodland. MNM Seeds, channel seedsmanship at work, serving the Glen Elder area. Programming on Smoky Hills PBS is made possible in part by an underwriting grant from Nextech, providing the area with top-notch broadband, business, technology, and advertising solutions. Nextech proudly supports public broadcasting and all of its ventures, impacting the economic growth of rural communities. Welcome back to Trojan Field and Beloit on Smoky Hills PBS, the Kansas eight-man Division I All-Star Game. The East squad with a 24 to 20 lead over the West squad. I'm Jeremy McGuire, along with Larry Jansen. Larry, uh, boy, it was a lot of action in the first half, back and forth, and big plays were a part of the game. That was it. The sustained drives didn't happen so much, but they cut them by surprise. I don't know what the time of possession was, Jeremy, if you might have it or something, but it's just amazing how quick they scored. And you gotta watch it, you know, they're both quarterbacks have done a great job of getting loose. Cade Ritzke, first half, 81 yards on 17 carries. And he had himself a couple of rushing touchdowns. And he also threw for one. Jaden Garrison for the East had 111 yards unofficially on nine carries. He had two touchdown runs. And he also threw for another. So a lot of big plays and a lot of them coming from the quarterback position. And the two guys that you just mentioned, that's what the coaches said in the last possession to win the game. That's who went the ball, the, the fake pigskin in the hands of. And our second half is underway. Kick deep. Garrison has it at the goal line. He'll bring it out. Goes to the far side. And Brody McDowell runs him down from behind from Hill City and it'll be up first down and 10. They'll spot the ball at the 13 yard line. Officials for today's game, Brett Post, 21 years. Also Wade Kirk, the 23, Stu Chant, 44 years. Luke Heskamp, three years. And Caden Stein with five years, 96 total years of officiating experience today. And it went down at halftime. I tell you what, it is toasty out there. 
First and 10. Ball at the 13. Motion is Campbell. Garrison with the carry. Jukes to the outside. Gets a block. Still on his feet and is finally pushed out of bounds. At the 31 yard line, Blake Goodman on the tackle, but not before Garrison picks up 16 yards. He juked and jived a lot of them on that run. Did a great job. But Garrison is so tough to line up and bring down. You got to have a square head on him. You can't. If you don't leave your feet too early. You're not going to get him. Very elusive. Braden Collins. He's more of a bulldozer, and he gets hit and dropped. He'll pick up three on the play up to the 34. Bring up second down and seven. But uh, that uh, Jaden Garrison for Kevin Ayers at Little River had uh, 1,677 yards this year on 265 carries, 37 touchdowns on the run. And we just saw why. Shifty quickness. He knows his way to the yes, end zone. Yes, he does. You have to wonder if these coaches are going to try and shorten the second half a little bit, taking a little bit more time in and out of the huddle with the heat that is really She's starting to take effect. Tight formation now and kind of the, the old power eye formation. Garrison up the middle, right up down just shy of midfield. He picks up six on the play. It'll bring up third and one. Isaac Elkins from Oswego, head coach Matt Fowler. Spent a lot of time in Spearville as well. Third down, one yard to go. Collins broke through a tackle and he's gonna have himself a first down. Cyrus Green had him in the backfield, but Collins too strong and broke through the ankle tackle. And he picked up four yards and a first down. That's old Slavish Green missed that tackle and claps his hand. He's mad, dog, he's mad at himself. Had a chance, but yeah, he, did. he did what you talked about with Garrison. He left his feet too early. That's right. You got to drive your legs right on through him, the body. Arm tackling don't work. First and ten. On the carry, Ryan Wolgram. Boy, that play, the timing and the spacing was just off, and it really threw the play off, and a loss on the play of a yard. You know, and there was a year for Madison, though. Ryan had 34 rushes for 439 yards. He averaged 12.9 yards every time he carried the ball. Had six catches for 87 yards, so he can catch it. Had 10 touchdowns there. But he averaged 14 and a half yards just and two touchdowns just from passing. Tough kid. Second down, Ryan 11 Wolgram. yards. Garrison to throw up oh. the field. Oh. Caught. First and goal. Elkins on the receiving end. I have a. Perfect pass, though, Jeremy. Caught him right on stride. Let him. It's just perfect pass. 32 yards on the catch. And the East methodically moving this ball down the field just over four minutes into the second half. Garrison, right side, he's pushed out of bounds. 
They have three guys making the tackles, the reason why it didn't score. Pushed him wide. Great job by the defense not to let him in to get in the end zone. Now here comes Hunter Engel in again. Let's see if this is play I run and saw him running the last two days, Thursday and Friday. See if they fake it to seven going up the middle. Nope. Garrison leading. Left side towards the end zone. Did he get there? Yes. Jaden Garrison from three yards out. It's his third touchdown run of the ball game. And the Little River product continues to propel his team. They lead 30 to 20. That's a great lead block by Hunter Engel. And he just, Harrison, I mean, Garrison did a great job just following his blocks right into the corner of the end zone. Thirty to twenty, so a two score game again. Yes, it is. They're gonna find out what they're gonna do here for a two point extra point. Well, they got them split. Twins in motion. Rudolph yeah, towards the in. goal line, he's in. Yep. Aiden Rudolph into the end zone with the two point conversion. And the East has built their lead back to 12 with 7.34 to go in the third quarter. It's 32 to 20. And a little play action. Play action, good run then. Yep, did a great job. By good old Aiden Rudolph from Clifton Clyde Eagles country. Russ Steinberg, the head coach up there. So 7.34 to go, third quarter. The West has been in this position before. Yes, Down by 12 and needing to make a comeback. They've made some big plays throughout this game. Now they have an opportunity to do so again. Surprised they didn't have a water break or something in here because I bet it's pretty warm out on the field, isn't it? Jeremy? Well, and they've had opportunities, you know, between touchdowns and stuff for everybody to gather up on the sideline and get a drink. So Graham Stevens, who has crushed the ball every time. And again. That one's uh, going to be returnable. Because there's a little breeze in the east. Oh, what a hit. Looked like Stevens possibly on the tackle. Uh, but Tassa went down quickly. Austin Tyson also went on the tackle. First and ten. Ritzke trying to break a tackle. Pulled Jarek Wykey yeah. out across the 20 to the 23 yard line. A gain of four on the play. Another Clifton Glide Eagle. Jarek Wykey, 6'1, 210 pounder. But Clifton Glide Eagles made that tackle. Second down. Hand off, fumble, and it's recovered by the East. <coughs> Skidmore lost it, and immediately on the football for the East All-Stars. That's what they did not need. Aiden Rudolph on the recovery, and that could be a big one. That is the fourth turnover of the ball game on the West All-Stars. It's tough to win ball games. You 
turned the ball over that many times. And when that guy's running it against you. Yep. Garrison goes right for five yards. Gavin Eulen on the tackle. Where Kevin there is that Jaden Garrison was always a double threat this year. He could run the ball, pass the ball, even catch on the receiving side of it. They use him in different ways. And from what I hear, he's about as good of a basketball player as he is a football player. So I heard too. Collins up the middle. He's hit and brought down. Gavin Eulen on the tackle. Pick up a three on the play. And he's one of the two eight-man players that's made the uh, West team or the Shrine Bowl game, too. So it's an incredible honor for him. Not only for eight-man today, but to be an eight-man player on the Shrine Bowl. Third down, two yards to go. Collins. Collins poked out of bounds, but not before he gets a first down. <laughs> Ethan Salmon thought he had stripped the football. Yeah, he did. Gain of four on the play and a first down. Ball at the nine-yard line. Garrison's going to follow Campbell inside the 10. Covers up the football, brought down at the five, a gain of four. Unofficially, Garrison averaging just a shade under 10 yards a carry. Not too shabby at all. Now that that dog will hunt. Yes, it will. Second down and goal from the five. Clock well, at can, four you minutes. Can run with the big dogs out in the street. You don't understand the porch either, does it? You don't have to Not typically. Them. No. Second down and goal. Garrison slips Still a tackle, good. slips another tackle, and gets back nearly to the line of scrimmage. Loses a yard. Bring up third down. And Brody McDowell helped him up, Matt, helped old Garrison back up on his feet. Good sportsmanship. See what package they bring out here. Shelby Hoppus from Canton Galva heading up the offense. They'll split to the far side. Yeah. Rudolph takes the snap. It's a low one. He's in trouble. He's stacked up. Lucas Webster is there. Had a little help as well as Brody McDowell came in. And also Cade, Caden White in on the tackle. Well, Lucas Webster, you know, 255 pounders, six foot six from the cross. Uh, his uncle is uh, one of the coaches on the West team, John Webster. Uh, did a great job then. Big boy. They've had some big kids come out of lacrosse. Yes, they have. And timeout. 3.05 to go first, third quarter. We're back after this on Smoky Hills PBS. Production of the eight-man all-star game is made possible by GBT Communications, Simpson Farm Enterprises of Hayes, Ransom, Great Bend, and Beloit, Leitner Buildings in Hayes and Atwood, Crustbuster Speed Kit, 
Incorporated in Spearville and Dodge City, Kansas. G&L Pharmacy, serving the Nest City area. Garden of Eden Specialty Grocery Store, Little River. Farmer State Bank, Galva, Kansas. At Next Tech Wireless, we're proud to invest in Kansas communities. We have nearly 50 locations across the state to support your wireless needs. We're friends, we're neighbors, we are Kansas. Welcome back to Trojan Field in Beloit. Jeremy McGuire and Larry Jantz on Smoky Hills PBS. Eight man division one all-star game. And they're gonna try a field goal. Ah, this way. The Grand Stevens. Sure. We'll tee it up. Garrison will hold. We know he has the leg. We've seen the kickoffs. Snap is down, the kick is up, and the kick is right down Broadway. Amazing. Good 27 job. yards in Graham Stevens with my recollection, Larry, possibly the first field goal I've ever seen even attempted in the eight-man all-star game. I think you're right. I'd go along with that one. And it would have been good for him another 20, 30 yards away. One of the uh, joys and thrill of coaching for Alex McMillian was ending Canton Galva's 23 game win streak in the regionals uh, the region round of playoffs. And now the assistant coach uh, from, for him today is Selby Hoppitz, who was the Canton Galva head coach. So, kind of a, uh, they all get all these together and smart coaches, good coaches. You got Kevin Ayers. Shelby Hoppus and Brody Vandergrift from Cottonwood Falls or Chase County Bulldogs. They're doing a great job, and now they lead 35 to 20. So it's still a two-score ball game, so successful for the West that they stopped them, but the East still gets points with 3.01 to go, third quarter. Stevens, a sh ah. onside kick, and is recovered by Caden White. Falls on that. So they tried the element of surprise, and the West was not surprised. And Caden White recovered it. Of course, he's playing the day for his head coach today, as well as during the year that Hoxie Indians, Lance Barr. At 12 years in coaching, 87 wins, 37 losses. Of course, he's helped by Brant Douglas from Leote, Wichita County, Pat Haston from Joaquini or Trigo Golden County Eagle, Golden Eagles, and John Webster from the Lacrosse Swepherd. So here we go. First and 10. The ball on the 33 yard line. Ritzke out in the flat, Tassett makes the catch. Across midfield, fumbles it out of bounds. At, they're gonna mark it at the 29 yard line. So a gain of 20 yards on the play. That was a great run after the catch too by old Tassett. Trace did a good job. He's only 145 pounds from Spearville Lancers. They throw it out to Tassett again. Makes another move up close to the first down. He is just short. No, they're going to and say keep rolling the clock. Yeah. So just short of the first down. Now they do move the sticks. Another throw out in the flat. This time Huggins makes the catch. It is upended by Trent Rogers. Yeah. After a gain of one on the play. Second down and nine. 
little instruction from the west yeah. sideline. Thank Coach Douglas. Ritsky throws it in the flat to Tassett. He gets a block from Huggins, first and down. it's going to be first down and goal. With Cleveland Huggins, a, a really, or Clevin Huggins, a really fine tackle over there on the far side, or block over on the far side. Yes, sir. And uh, you got that little task. He's, he's speedy, quick, like a chihuahua. Not very big. First and goal, Ritzke will carry this one. Gets to the edge, brought down short of the goal line. Stevens in on the tackle. Isaac Miser in there. Gain of five on the play. Can they punch it in? I'm guessing 14 is keeping it here. He pitches it. Nothing going. Skidmore hit. Not anywhere to go. Mason Mills from Oswego on the tackle. Loss of four on the play. Well, they smelled that out, though. They knew what was coming up. That's sound defense when you cover that pitch, man. Give me Aiden Rudolph on the tackle. Yeah. Look down, and Mason Mills is right down in front of us on the sideline. 25 seconds to go, third quarter. Ritzke looking to throw. Now he's looking for some room to run. Cuts it inside, and he's going to be short of the goal line. He picked up like four yards down to the two. Before it down. And that is likely going to be the final play of the third quarter. So we are through three quarters of play. Your score, Division I East. 35, Division I West 20. We're back for your final quarter after this timeout on Smoky Hills PBS. Production of the eight-man all-star game is made possible by Simpson Farm Enterprises of Hayes, Ransom, Great Bend, and Beloit. Hoxie State Insurance, serving the Hoxie area. Active Balance Chiropractic and Acupuncture Clinic in Atwood, Bird City, and Goodland. At Next Tech Wireless, we're proud to invest in Kansas communities. We have nearly 50 locations across the state to support your wireless needs. We're friends, we're neighbors, we are Kansas. Welcome back to Trojan Field in Beloit on Smoky Hills PBS. Big play coming up here, fourth down and goal from the two yard line for the division one west squad they trail 35 to 20 and larry jance a huge play coming up here absolutely they need to score because like you just mentioned fourth down and two and they got to punch it in bang down 15 points they they got to punch this in if you're ever rooting for the red west team all-stars i don't know if they're going to quarterback sneak I, they have it's not handed tough. it off much. Well, a few times to Aaron Skidmore, once to Trace Tassett, and three times to Jace Hamel. I'd say Fourth and goal. Risk, I think you went risky with the ball. Motion man. Ritsky's going to throw it. And touchdown to tackle eligible. Harlan Obi Oha! Harlan. Harlan Obi Oha. Ha ha ha. Carlin Obi Oha. Obi Oha. <laughs> oh, no. Obi Oha. Ha ha ha. Ha <laughs> Two-point conversion and tip by Ritzke. He is in <laughs> with 11.56 to go. 35 to 28 is the score. But Obi Oha <laughs> open on the backside, Larry Jantz. 
And the West All-Stars back in it. Yes, they are. And good for him. Good-natured kid. He's only 6'11", wears size 18 shoes. Yeah. Obiaha. So let's all, let's all say it together. Obi Oha. Obi Oha. Obi -oha. <laughs> so now that the West gets it into the end zone, Larry, now the East offense, who's been answering all day long, will get the ball again. I think that, that field goal, though, sure has helped the score, though, right now, didn't it? Huh? Put them up by this. Total Put them up by seven. seven. Yeah, they've only been up before if that wouldn't happen. That's a good ball game. And we've got 11.56, almost the whole fourth quarter left to go. Blake Goodman from Attica to kick it off. And it's another quibber. Oh, 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 the ball's loose. They got it. Who's got it? Uh, I think the blue got it. But there's now the, the officials. Sense. Nope, they're oh, oh, giving oh. it to the West. So the West has recovered their second onside kick of the day. You, sometimes you see one, but you rare, them see rare two. that you see two. That's right. Well, now the West has the momentum, the offense back out on the field. Hmm. Looked like the East had it for a second, but never yeah. controlled it while they were on the ground. It popped up, and the West was there to recover. First and 10 from the 39. Ritzky, pump fake, steps back, looks, throws it out in the flat, and the catch is made. Good job. Noah Phillips on the receiving end. Yeah. Kind of the outlet receiver, and Ritzky found him for a gain of five. Six one, 190 pounder from Argonia. Had 93 catches for 34 yards this year. And here they go. Second and four, or long four. Ritzke to throw out in the flat, incomplete, is looking for Tassett. Well covered that time by Graham Stevens. And at least he didn't want to take a chance on a reception and have a pick six, so he kind of threw him a little bit more to the right. Incomplete pass, no harm done. You want to overthrow that one and yes, not underthrow it. Third down, Ritzke again, under pressure, dumps it off for Tassett, incomplete. It'll bring up fourth down. Ritzke slow to get up. But he says, no, I'll stay in that game. Yes, sir. With inflation now, it makes it fourth down and four for the last. At the East fourth and four. Line. And Time a timeout, out. and we'll take it with you. 11.17 to go, 35.28. We're back after this on Smoky Hills PBS. Production of the eight-man all-star game is made possible by GBT Communications, Leitner Buildings in Hayes and Atwood, Hoxie State Insurance, serving the Hoxie area, Crustbuster Speed King, Incorporated in Spearville and Dodge City, Kansas. G&L Pharmacy, serving the Nest City area. Garden of Eden Specialty Grocery Store, Little River. Farmer State Bank, Galva, Kansas. Active Balance Chiropractic and Acupuncture Clinic in Atwood, Bird City, and Goodland. MNM Seeds, channel seedsmanship at work, serving the Glen Elder area. 
Programming on Smoky Hills PBS is made possible in part by an underwriting grant from Nextech, providing the area with top-notch broadband, business, technology, and advertising solutions. Nextech proudly supports public broadcasting and all of its ventures, impacting the economic growth of rural communities. And welcome back to Beloit. The eight-man Division I All-Star Game here on Smoky Hills PBS. We have a fourth down and a long four for the West All-Stars. They have it just outside the East 33-yard line. They need to get it almost to the 29. Ritzke came up a little hobbled yes, after the last play and has a little bit of a gimp in his yeah, step. That's it. And that's going to be an offside. Yeah. Look like we had a jump on the left end. Hunter Engel, I believe, was the guilty yeah. party. And that's going to be enough for a first down. Only the second penalty of the ball game against the East. And they always come at an inappropriate time, it seems like. Yeah, because usually they're... It, it's short yardage when they yeah. try to dry you off. Yeah, that's when they have the hard count. And it worked. Ritzke out in the flat. Hamel has it. Lowers the shoulder, still on his feet, and leans forward down to about the 24-yard line. A pickup of four on the play, almost five. That's a good little swing pass by Ritzke out there. Okay, did a good job. Just get over that outstretched hands of that defensive guy. Quickly, snap, and Ritzke is going to pick up three on the play. Three yards on the play to the 20-yard line. Making the tackle for these with number 11, Tyler Good. Third down, two. Yes, sir. -y. Everybody's checking their armbands for the play. It's been called in, signaled in. We got a bunch. That's a bunch. Look. Ritzke looking for Obi Oha. He makes a catch again. Harlan Obi Oha. Yes, sir. Down to the 16 yard line. And that's a gain of four yards. You know, he's a big fella, but he has hands. Pretty yes, good basketball is. player. Yes, he is. Skidmore with the carry that time. Picks up two on the play. Ritzke, under pressure, Nowhere. dropped. Engel was in there. Also coming in was Connor Kane from Canton Galva. Loss of three. Loss back to the 17 yard line, loss of four yards on the play. Makes it now third down and 11. In motion, Zotasa, yeah. Ritzke uh -oh. gets out of some pressure, throws it over the middle, catches made. Did he make Skidmore. It? I think he. It's going to depend on the spot. I believe he has enough for a first down. I think he kept his right foot in, his left foot just reached past the sticks. Right foot in, his right foot out. Yeah. Put it back in. And right when he hit a little hip, skip and jump. Uh -oh. The fourth and one. And a timeout, timeout by the West, and we'll keep it right here with 9.03 to go. They were close to a first down. 
just missed it. So now, what do you do? Do you load it up in the box and play Smash Mouth, or do you try and get something on the edge? It's going to be critical, whatever they do, because down by seven points, and you only got you got nine minutes, plenty of time, really. But uh, they can't have to me. You don't want it to have a slow developing play because they're all over them. It's got to be some quick hitter or a quick pass, a run pass option. I don't think I don't think a dive play up the middle will work. Well, Lance Barr and his staff drawn it up over there on the far side. Alex Mamillion and his team over here on the near side talking about what to look for. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Credit to Eric Burks up here in the press box getting water to everybody oh, as we come along. He's a trooper. He's top shelf. I have uh, consumed a lot of H2O today. And that's a good thing. And one Gatorade. Likewise. Here we go. Fourth down to one. Oh, it's up front. Good they snap. give it to Hamel, and he's got the first down. So it was a direct snap to Hamel, and he needed one, and he got... Three. So now the West knocking on the door. And then Hamel gets busted for a false start. That's no good. First penalty of the second half on the West. 8.47 to go. In the fourth quarter. Well, first down for nine yards to gap. Ritzky, he he's in trouble, and he's dropped. Too much zigging and zagging and no north-south running. Kane with the tackle. Back to the 12, a loss of three. Good old Connor Kane from Kenton Yelba. 6'3", 206 pounds. Second down and goal for the West at the 12-yard line. Connor Kane made that tackle. Ritzke looking to throw. He has time, lofts it. It is intercepted! <laughs> Eli Campbell on the interception from Sedan, and that Two. stops the drive with 7.41 to go in the fourth quarter. That interception by Soup. Ian Soup Campbell from Sedan, America. So Eli with the interception, and that is the fifth turnover today. And that is not a good recipe to win a ball game. And that's the second interception in the end zone. And all the coaches would agree with your assessment there, Jeremy. Every one of them. Oh, Garrison, okay. See? timing off on that one a little bit. Manny Chavez in on the tackle. Gain of three on the play. Seven minutes and 18 seconds left to go. Drew Berman just came in here and brought the play from the Brain Trust of Hoppus, Ayers, Vandegrift, and McMillan. Collins, right up the gut. On second down, taking the handoff for the East, number 26. 
Hamill in on the tackle. Gain of a yard on the play. It's third and six. So Garrett Robinson come into that game, 5'10", pounds for Burning Game, along with uh, by Jaden Garrison. See what they play. Big play here for the West defense. Big play for the East offense. Garrison looking to throw. Now he says, I'm going to run it, and he's hit and dropped. Boy, Manny Chavez fought himself off a block, and along with some help from Jace Hamel made the hit and a gain of a couple on the play. It looked like Garrison had some room to roam out there, but those two shut it down. Yes, he did. Manny Chalvis did a great job. 6'1", 220 pounds. Had 48 ta tackles at one interception, three fumble recoveries this year for the Wichita County Indians out of Leote. Great job by Manny. Wearing jersey number 11 today for the Red All-Stars. And he had a fearless practice the other day, about four or five times with those scrimmage they had going. Playing very well. Punts away, and it could be returnable. Goodman has it across the 15 to the 20 and stretches out to the 27. Yeah. And that's where the West will start, first down and 10 from their own 27-yard line, 5-10 to go, so... Time starting to become a bit of a factor. Good little run back then by Blake Goodman. You know, 5'9", 165 pounder from Attica. They had 27 rushes for 579 yards this year and 14 touchdowns. Blake Goodman on that uh, punt return then. So Cade Ritzke, we'll see if he's back to health <laughs> on this drive. He's going to run it. He's going to the backside, looking for a block. Breaks the tackle near midfield. And they're going to mark him right at the 40, a gain of 13 and a first down. Looked like a broken play and did, did real well with it. Right back on the ball. Patience. Ritzke letting his block set up. Miser in on the tackle. Gain to seven. Ritzke to the outside. We got a flag. And we got another flag. So we got what's likely dead ball. a hold. And then we've got a dead ball. So we're going to have two penalties that are going to get enforced here. And I'm guessing somebody said a magic word. Like crab apple? Prunes. Use your imagination. Okay. Alfalfa. We got a hold. And then against the West. Dead ball unsportsmanlike against the East. That's what I thought. I thought they were going to be offsetting each other, but they're going to mark him. No, because they happened to. Dead. Now they'll mark at 15. And it'll be a first down. Yes. First and then. So first down and 10 from the 20, up to 28, 27, 28 yard line. 
Direct snap. Looks like Brody McDowell in. And Jerry Wykey from Thrift and Clyde made the tackle. No, that was, uh, excuse me, that was Isaac Salmons. He picked up six. Salmons again carries down to the 16. He picked up four, and it's a first down. So Cade Ritzke off to the side. Helmet off right now. Really struggling with that ankle. Isaac Salmons stepping right in, though. Skidmore, direct snap, gets to the edge inside the 10 and brought down as he gets inside the five. A little deceptive call right then by Lane Lance Barr and Brant Douglas. First and goal, 325 to go. Salmons up the middle. Yes. Picks up Isaac about three. Isaac Salmons, uh, one of the youngest sons of old Oliver Salmons. He made Hanson Elks famous back in his day. Oliver Salmons also played in the Shrine Bowl. Second and goal from the three. Direct snap, Cyrus Green on the carry. He is in for the touchdown. Cyrus Green into the end zone for the touchdown. So here's the play of the game right here, 35-34. And the timeout is going to be called by the East. So Larry Jantz are going to keep it right here. Ball will be at the three. You have to get it into the end zone to take the lead. And you have 2.52 to go. Play, your, play head coach right now. You have an injured Cade Ritzke. So Well they've been they've been putting these uh, quick passes or I mean the rushes like Cyrus Drain hadn't been running much, but he's a bulldog. He's a pull but I don't know if they can run a straight dive with that power in there, do you? No, I don't think so. Uh I mean they I mean, just did on the last play for a touchdown. But, but you don't think, know if you can go right back to I something like stuff, that. I think they'll stuff the defense for a run. Um, however, I don't know. I don't know what Kevin Ayers, I think he's running the defense and special teams and, and maybe Alex McMillian because Shelby Hoff has said he's been doing the offensive coordinator or he did in, during practice this week. But they'll probably get all their heads together. I I don't think they're going to go to Harlan with the red. However, he's the tallest player out there. By a long ways. But he's critical. Oh, here we go. This could be your ball game. They got him at an end. Isaac Salmons will take the snap. It's a little dump pass, and it's uh -huh. incomplete. Well, the timing was just off on that one. Incomplete pass. And with 2.52 to go, 35-34 east on top. And Larry Jantz, they've converted two onside kicks. I would have a feeling they're going to go for another one right tent, here simply because of the fact of the time and yep. only one timeout remaining. I would say that is a, a no-brainer. They did work on this, I can tell you that. 
during practice. They've worked on their onside kicks. It, oh, it was obvious. They've, yeah. they've converted two of them so far. Now they what they might not do is onside kick it right in the middle, which is where they've onside kicked it first two times, right down the middle. It's going to depend where they line up, the front, the front return people. They are prepared They're gonna have all for an seven. onside kick. I'd say they're prepared for an onside kick this time. Your best shot, I think, is going Pooch kick. right side. Goodman, little pooch kick. Oh, a nice play by the East. And they get who that was. A nice play by 42, Garrett Robinson. So it'll be first down and 10. Ball at the 28 yard line. Well, we're going to find out here. Can the East keep control of it, get a first down? Because two first downs darn sure does the trick. If they can sustain the drive. And one timeout remaining. They're going to go right side with Garrison. He cuts it back. And he is upended. He gets to the 34 yard line and a pickup of five. Clock continues to wind, and as Chris Berman would say, tick, 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 tick. Mm. Yes. Second down. Five yards to go, the ball at the 34. They're going to have to take a timeout. Nope, they got it. Garrison, right at the middle, hit. Dropped short of a first down. It's going to bring up third down and a third down and two. Pick up a three on the play. Third down, one yard to go. 128 to go in a count of counting. And they were telling their guys to watch the ball because this could be your ball game right here. Here comes the snap. There goes Garrison. Up the middle, he's hit and dropped. And timeout is called right at the one minute mark. Chavez was there, also coming in for the West was Ethan Salmons from South Gray. A loss of a yard on the play. It's gonna bring up fourth yep. down and three. Now what do you Fourth do? down and two and a half. Do you go back in punt formation and try not to have a, a block punt? Uh, to get field position, or do you try to go ahead and uh, get the first down and run out the clock? What decision do you make? I go for the first down. Yeah, because they still have to go 40 yards or 40 yeah. yards in less than a minute. I go for the first down. I think they will too. You know the gambler in me anyway. So it'll be fourth down and one. They need the 39 yard line. So they're going to have Rudolph. Aiden oh, they got Rudolph. Eagle back in there. They got Hunter. Garrison in motion. Rudolph with the snap. He's going to carry it. He is hit, and he's dropped. He did not make it. 
He is hit at the line of scrimmage and dropped. No gain on the play. The West defense holds when they absolutely they had, had to. to. Yeah. And the offense comes back on the field with 55 seconds remaining. Whoa. I don't disagree me, with the call, though. Me neither, because Hunter Engel has been a tough bulldog leading interference, and they used him kind of for a decoy this way. Fake to him, and then uh, Rudolph tried to keep it and didn't make it this time. Great job by the defense on that red team, though. My goodness. And one thing that will help the West here, and if they can, with 38 yards to go, is they have been hurrying this whole time. That's right. That's right. Ritzke back in at quarterback. He's going to throw it out in the flat. Catch is made by Tassett. He's got a first down, and he is out of bounds with the clock stopped. And a gain of almost 12. We'll call it 11. That was only six seconds taken off the clock. Stop the clock. 49 seconds to go. First down. West on a move. On the 27-yard line. What's the play? He's going to be risky. He's going to throw a safe pass to the outside again. Plenty of time left. And look out. I'd look out for Huggins. Huggins. Uh, me too. Huggins is split to this. Risky under pressure. Gets away from the pressure. And he Just goes out, of, out bounds. of bounds. He's going to lose yardage. Back to the 31 yard line. It's a loss of four, but. Saving the time is more important. Yeah, stop the clock. These guys have. So, timeout situation. The West, they have used their timeout. They have nothing left. The East has one remaining. Second down and 14. And Again, Ritzky was to go. running for his life on that last play. They stacked in. Look at they're gonna know they're gonna blitz again. They're bringing it. Ritzky gets out of trouble, looking, running towards the out of bounds. Oh, he got hit a little late there, and gets back nearly to the line of scrimmage, loses a yard. Yeah, they are not going to let him sit back there and pick them apart. Now, is it, since they're still rushing so much, now you just send uh, Harlan about five yards down there and loft the ball over his head before they get the rush gets to him. You right do, throw right over the line. Just tell him to get behind a linebacker. You do that or you bring somebody for a little screen. You know, bring Tassett down, about about maybe, fake, maybe faking out, and then come right back. There's, There's a screen. screen. It's caught by Tassett, but and he's going to pick. Out. He's going to pick out, up so. maybe six yards. Got to go. That's fourth down, and they have no timeouts. Fourth down and nine. They got to get a good play here 18, with 16 17. seconds. Here we go. Here comes the heat. Ritzky th throws it up the field. Wolgram with the interception. That is his third interception of the ball oh, game, yeah. and that will do it. Ritzke knew he had yeah. to get rid of it. The pressure was coming, and with five seconds left to go in the ball game, the East All-Stars will just need to take a knee and call it, and call it a game. Garrison will take the deep snap. Takes a knee, and that's all she wrote. That was a great ball game, wasn't it? Boy, yeah, a heck of a ball game. It does not get much better than that. Final score, 35-34. Had about everything you could want in a football game, Larry Jance. And these young men really laid it on the line today in what for many of them will be the final time they put on the pads. Yeah, there was, 
Everybody's a winner today. It was just beautiful weather. Uh, lots of lots of good spirited action. Lots of uh, misdirection. Unbelievable plays. Long, lot of uh, long pass options. The the big pl big plays about hurt each team. Yeah, I mean we had we had all kinds of scoring going on, and they were big plays worth of scoring. Had 65-yard touchdowns. We had long drives. We had short drives. We had onside kicks, two successful onside kicks. And your final score is the East All-Stars 35, the West All-Stars 34. And man, what a fun week it's been yeah. here in Beloit. Great sportsmanship by the players both ways. I'd see him knock them down and then, uh, you know, get help them get right back up. That's uh, nice to see. Yeah, that's the way it should be. That is the way it should be because, you know, these all, you know, these 80 young men, these 40 young men here, they are, uh, they are something else. I mean, they... They have come together as an individual unit for the East, an individual unit for the West, but the whole group together has come together even as opponents. They've, got, they've come together. And again, the friendships that they'll have forever, forever are pretty special. If you're the coaches, what do you tell, what do you tell these young men right now? This great effort. Great effort, uh, way to play. You played your hearts out. Uh, comes down to hey, a couple of miscues here, a couple of miscues there, like most games do. To who's going to be come out on top at the end? Uh, nobody has to hang their head and be sorry for anything they did, though. No, not at all. I mean, it was uh, it was really, really the effort was. Extraordinary. Yes. I mean, there were some there were some major hits. Yes. You know, it was uh, you know sometimes in all star games and not necessarily the eight man all star game. Sometimes it can be oh I, you know we're here. I'm not going to give my everything. I'm just here to yeah. you know to sh you it's know show it's up. a show. And these kids, that was not the case. They were representing themselves. They're representing their coaches. Schools, They're representing community. their communities. Their yes. teammates from that have helped them get here, you know, in the banquet last night. One thing Ted Hayes said was, you know, it's not just you that got you here. It was your team. It, it was whole all your community. teammates, the whole everybody. And they, that, man, players that came before you, you know. And remember, and maybe how to talk all the, about the good athletes, pro athletes. He's looked at it, and guess what? They all come small schools in Kansas. Yep. There's a lot of them. Claflin, Ron, Ransom, remember? Yep, I was yeah. there. Yes, I know that. <laughs> but he's calling out guys like Nolan Cromwell, John Riggins, Jackie Stiles, name a few. And Ted Hayes did a great job, great speech that these 80 kids and 16 coaches remember forever. So your final score again from Beloit, the – Kansas eight-man Division I West loses to the East All-Stars by a score of 35-34. to 34. The East All-Stars victorious. A special thanks to everybody who made the broadcast possible, from everybody in the truck back in the offices to the camera operators who are out there in the direct sunlight in the heat all day today. We appreciate all the effort. For analyst Larry Jantz, Amen. this is Jeremy McGuire saying so long from Trojan Field and Beloit on Smoky Hills, PBS. God bless and good luck to everybody.